Welcome to JoJo Cider Reviews and More. I'm JoJo. I am joined today by my special guest, Pat, who's joined me in a couple other videos on my channel. Thanks for joining today, Pat. My pleasure. So we have a very, very special review today. I've been wanting to do this review for a long time. It is the Heady Topper. Yes, crafted by the Alchemist Brewing Company out of Stowe, Vermont. And I say Stowe because originally it was in Burlington, Vermont. It is 8% alcohol by volume, one pint, 100 IBUs. And Pat, a lot of people say this kind of revolutionized the whole New England IPA craze. Yeah, it really did. They're the first craft brewery, craft brewery to come out with New England IPA. They kind of set the standard for the style, and they really put it on the map, to be quite honest. Yeah. So this is really hard to get, guys. You have to be with either within 25 miles of the brewery or you have to be at you know the actual brewery they actually I read a quote saying if you don't know anyone in upstate vermont or you're not at the brewery you're pretty much out of luck because it's that hard to find yeah and yep. pat this gets a hundred out of a hundred on beer advocate and Unreal. It, is, it is also ranked number one for the new england ipa style not only that it is ranked the fifth best beer in the world that's insane. And for New England IPA to be ranked that high, yeah. fifth overall, as yeah. you know, a beer of that style to be ranked fifth overall, yeah. I think is really impressive and speaks a lot to how much they've set the bar for not only this style, but for craft brewing in general. Notably, it actually is ranked higher than the renowned Julius from Treehouse. Mm -hmm. Treehouse is actually number seven for the number for all-time New England IPA. Right. I'm sorry, all-time beer. Um, Julius is number seven. So it's actually ranked two positions ahead of the Julius right. beer. And lucky for us, yeah. unlike, unfortunately, unlike some of the uh, viewers of this video, we're within driving distance of yeah. both. We can actually go, you know, we got some time off from work. We can actually go get it. Some people can't. They've actually, I know one guy traveled from South Africa to get a couple cans. People used to like literally can this in the, in the bathroom at you know alchemist <laughs> bottle i don't think that i think they bottled it the bottle <laughs> oh bottled it yeah but and does that mean they would like take it take home it home or like sell it. it for later or i don't sell know it? like but still that's a super funny this yeah this started yeah. around 2011 by a husband and wife um john kimmage was the brewer and hurricane i'm sorry tropical storm irene or it might have been hurricane um actually destroyed the it was actually originally a pub, Alchemist Pub, and the and the Irene happened, and it became you know they shut down the pub, and it became the what what is known today as Alchemist Brewery. It went from a pub to a brewery. Right, and that was 2011. 2011. That yeah. was big when that happened because almost 10 years. When that hurricane hit, a lot of the South got the coverage, but the after effects of that storm that of that hurricane, it it just ripped right through Vermont. It was nuts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So it is uh, unfiltered, and back in the day, it was only brewed um, two or three times a year, and you can only, you can only get it on tap. It's funny, even today, if you go to the, you know, it's sold obviously at the brewery, but you can get it at certain, you know, select amount of locations around the brewery. Even then, though, it's hard to get because they actually um, limit the amount of four packs you can get. Mm -hmm. So it is extremely hard to get. My wife and I happened to be in central Vermont, and we were at a pub in Rutland, and they were actually selling us, so we lucked out. So I'm very happy. Yep. And this is actually, so they say to, on the, on, you know, on the can, it says, drink from the can, drink from the can, drink from the can three times. Right. Pat, do you want to speak a little bit to that, why they say that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think part of the nostalgia with craft brewing is, you know, with their whole slogan of drink from the can, um, <laughs> with the New England IPA, you get a lot of hop sediment, and for a lot of beer drinkers, if they pour, if they like to pour their beer into a glass, you see that hop sediment build up on the bottom. That might be kind of alarming to some beer drinkers, and for me personally, I've seen it. Like whatever, I'll drink anything basically. But uh, it, it's kind of like, what are all these? Like some people may not even know that it's hops that's collecting at the bottom of the glass. So. I think that's part of the reason why they say that, but they also say that because of the aroma, keeping the beer within the, uh, with the, with the original can, 
yeah. that, that the beer was placed into. Yeah. It retains the aroma at a much higher level than it would be if you poured it into a glass because that's where it all would dissipate. But, you know, personally, I drink beer for the flavor, not the aroma. So I don't take their drink from the can slogan as seriously as maybe some other like loyal drinkers would. But if you can get past the hop sediment and losing some of the aroma, you're going to enjoy this beer just fine. Fairly large description on the can. I won't read it all, but the very um, last part says, this is by the brewer. You know, if you must pour it in a glass, must in capital letters, you may find that some of the hop resins have settled to the bottom. Leave them in the can while pouring. The beer, this beer is perishable and it's at its best when it is young and fresh and hazy. Keep it cold, but not ice cold. Drink this beer immediately. We are always making more. John Kimmich, the brewer. Also says, don't be a D-bag, recycle this can. Which right. Is cool. And it's not a hard rule to follow. If you see a recycling can, <laughs> which they're everywhere, folks. If you can find them, if you go outside, you'll find them. Just put the can in the basket. So finally, guys, going in for the pour. All right. There you go, Pat. Thank you. Yep. Little PBR glass. Pat, you want to talk about that for a second? We both love this beer, PBR. Yeah, PBR. Have you reviewed that? I think not you yet. No, you I haven't. haven't. No, I've done Coors Banquet, Miller Light, Bud Light. Yeah. I've not done PBR. PBR is good. They have a great coffee stout. It's, yes. It's yes. a coffee stout, correct? Um, it is not not a stout, but it's like a uh, I don't know malted beverage, but yeah. it's very good. They have a coffee coffee beer out. They yeah. also have a what's called a Pass Blue Ribbon Easy. Yes. I don't. I guess that's just a lighter version. Lower ABV, right, yeah. right, right, right. But PBR is great. Yeah, some good products. It's not so much meant for this review, but we'll <laughs> get to them later, I'm sure. So let's look at the uh, appearance real quick. Deep, deep orange color, um, dark orange. You get a, you know, about two fingers of head. Uh, creamy white, maybe, maybe a tint of orange, light orange in the head. Good looking beer. I um, can't really see through the glass that much. You can kind of see a shadow through my hand, but not much. You get a, a little bit of carbonation, not a whole hell of a lot. But, Pat, what do you get in the uh, appearance? I uh, get that hazy finish yeah, that yeah. everyone talks about with the with the appearance. Right. Uh, certainly can't see anything through it. Right. Obviously, with it being a commercial craft beer, you do see the carbonated bubbles floating up. Right. I think it retains the head very well, which tells me as a home brewer, there's quite a bit of flaked oats and wheat involved in this beer recipe, which I believe is kept top secret as it yeah, should the be. Yeast, yeah, they say it's top but, secret. Yeah. You know, the, the head of any beer is going to dissipate at some point, and this will retain its head, albeit at a lower level, throughout the entire session of drinking the beer, but it's it's there and it, it stays. It's it reminds good. me of his Miller products. They are known for their like the head retention, right? Decent amount of head, so that's kind of interesting. Right, and it's um, good because like I don't think that the carbonation is high. It's I don't think it's as high in New England IPAs or IPAs in general. In the macro American lagers, you tend to get a higher carbonate carbonation level. Uh, that style tends to lend itself to the crispiness more. With this, I think it's more so the ingredients that help retain that head retention, not so much, not so much the carbonation. Cool. Shall we go in for the aroma? Yeah. Oh yeah, you get that. You know, I would say it's almost like subtle hint of um, citrus. Not, it's not overwhelming. Some of the IPAs, cracked can open, it's like right in your face. Not particular. It's not really like that with this beer, but I'm definitely getting the. Um, the aroma of citrus, orange. Still get a little bit of malt though in that as well. And I smell a little bit of bitterness too, if that makes sense. I'm just getting that pininess. kind of pininess, right? Yep. Anything else you're getting in the notes? You mm -hmm. pretty much hit it on the yeah. head. Uh, with any New England IPA, you're gonna get the citrusy notes. With Heady Topper, you definitely get some of the pine and I certainly appreciate that with the West Coast iterations. For sure. Shall we? Yep. Salute. Yeah, you get that. The citrus, but you also get the piney notes. It's like, I, you know, oh, who? what channel was it? I think Matt from Massive Beer Reviews on YouTube reviewed this and said he gets that old school vibe. Um, was it him or one of the one of the YouTubers? And I, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with that. I get the old school 
um, pininess. You know, some of the New England IPAs, I feel like you don't get that at all. You don't get any, it's very low bitterness. So this, you got you got a little bit of a bite in it. You also get the citrus, you get that orange. You know, it's a little bit of bitter in it. You know, you get that bitterness, but you also get the malt that balances it out too. But I definitely yeah. get that pininess. And I feel like some of the New England IPAs that are sold today, you don't get that. Yeah, I definitely get some of the hot burn. Yeah. But like, I don't want to say this is crushable because it's eight percent. No, you definitely get, not like, sessionable. Yeah. You don't. You don't get the. You don't get the booziness from an eight percent beer. You could crush it, but you'd be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you back to college very fast. But you know, a night like tonight, it's mid seventies, late September here in uh, northern Massachusetts. This is the perfect beer to have by a fire, or even like. You know, during the summer, you know, July 4th on a beach on the coastline, yeah. this is something you'd want to have. Right. Super flexible beer as far as the time of year. Drown like Gloucester or something on the mm -hmm. beach is nice to have. Yeah, this mouth, is excellent. Mouthfeel is, I would say, almost getting into the medium range, maybe high light, um, light but you de uh, definitely get a decent amount of body in it. And um, good amount of lacing you can see there with the glass. Yep. Yep. Show the beer close. That is the heady topper, the famous heady topper. Okay. Um, get a little bit of like dankness too. I think. Oh sure. Taste, it's yeah. Vermont, right? Vermont. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. Um, this is one of the most popular beers that you're going to do on this channel, Joe. And the fact that it's rated number five worldwide. Worldwide. I mean, not, not just doing an IPA, but like ranked for all time. Yeah. For yeah, all yeah. kinds of styles involved to be ranked number five. That says a lot, and I'm glad you were able to bring this to the channel. Yeah, I've been wanting to review this beer. It's, a, it's between this and, like, you know, I want to really excited about rating Julius as well from Treehouse in Charlton, Massachusetts. Also, I'm very uh, fond of Sap from Treehouse, but this is, like, this might be up there number this one. Is, this is what started it, yeah, right? right? Like, you right. can't go Revolutionized wrong. it, yeah. Ugh, delicious, and it's hard to find as it should be. Joe, what did you pay for your four-pack? So I, I uh, got two four-packs in Rutland, Vermont, which is like, I don't know if it's, you know, within 25 miles of the brewery. I think I might have looked out, lucked out, but I actually got it for about 50 bucks, two yeah. four-packs. And that's... So eight eight beers. Right. But it, yeah. it, is, it is very expensive. <laughs> but hey, if you're a craft beer enthusiast, you got to try it. So yeah. when else am I going to get it? I mean, I'm not, I don't drive up to upstate Vermont that much, so... Right. Yeah, a lot of people don't, and if they do, they definitely pick this up. Yeah, and you got it, you got it. Some of you that have watched the reviews, especially on, like, maybe some of the lighter macro lager reviews, it's like, why would you pay $25 for the, uh, just a four-pack? Yeah. This beer is excellent. It's well-balanced. Obviously, the hot profile is very noticeable. I love it. It's super smooth. Yeah. But, you know, these craft breweries have to keep in mind that the prices that they have to pay – for the hops in general, for these New England IPAs, they are high. Hops are a very delicate ingredient to uh, to this type of beer, so they need them as fresh and as affordable all at the same time as much as they can. One thing I'll say before we uh, actually rate the beer, Pat and I actually reviewed a beer several months ago, the Lunch by the main brewing company, my main beer company, and I'm kind of getting a similar vibe with this beer it's kind of a cross between West Coast and East Coast, I think, which is what the main beer company's mm -hmm. lunch beer was as well. I believe the description on the main beer company was an East Coast version of the West Coast IPA yeah. or something like that. Yeah. You get that little bit of pineness, you get that old school West Coast IPA, but you get that citrusy, you know, juicy New England IPA. So it's kind of a nice balance, just interesting. But Love it. if you're going to, if we're going to rate this, I think it has to be within the category of New England IPA, even though it has some kind of, you know, west coast ipa qualities in it pat what would you rate it between zero to 100 <laughs> i don't know if you can put a number rules. on this joe like they rate it at what 100 on beer advocate it's 100 so, out of like, 100 if i yeah. give anything lower i'd be doing an injustice but i don't know i'd probably give it like a solid 98 99 like this is as good as you're gonna get right you know you're paying decent money just for a four pack of this and this beer i think deserves that kind of price tag yeah um i'll definitely give it a 98 for sure it is such a great beer new england ipa to be honest is it the my favorite one that i've had so far in my life i no it's not but it is i would highly recommend it it's hard to get it has done so much for the new england ipa industry in fact in beer in general the beer industry 
It has revolutionized beer in general, especially New England IPA. You know, it is a solid A+. I will give it a 97. Highly recommend it. And, you know, if you're a craft beer enthusiast, try to get to Vermont in some way. Trade for this beer if you can. It's worth trying at least once in your life. And it's you know. just worth it because it's what set the tone for yeah. New England IPA in yeah. general. Like you, by default, you just, for that reason only, you have to try it. Say what you will about Beer Advocate. You know, some people love it, some people hate it. But to be number five, there's a lot of different reviews that's saying something in the world. Top five beer and number one for the style. So try it, guys. You know, and Pat, thank you for joining. As always, thank I you. appreciate it. And uh, check out my... Instagram, JoJo, Cider Reviews, and more. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Till next time, salute.